What's up, YouTube fans? Today, we're going to take a look at something very unique, kind of special, a little bit of a history in the masterpiece and third-party world. This is the trailer for MP1, made by Vans Toys, what they were later to be known as. So there's a little bit of story and history behind that that's actually going to be probably a good portion of this video because there's a lot behind this. This was sent to me, by the way, by Dr. Diecast. Um, I really appreciate him sending me stuff to, to look at. Um, and this being a very unique piece, not many of them made, uh, even harder to get. So I really appreciate that. So a little bit of background. So MP1, if you don't know, was the masterpiece version of Optimus Prime. I put that in quotes because at the time they didn't establish a scale. It was just supposed to be a more detailed, uh, more accurate and just, you know, more adult kind of toy. Uh, had lots of features and details and it came out in Japan but also here in the United States came out in Walmart as a Walmart exclusive. It was for the 25th anniversary. It was basically all about the, the movie and all about the Optimus Prime figure and it didn't come with a trailer at the time. So this company, uh, which was a third party company, one of the first in kind of messing around on the forums and you're know, not really in the limelight and if you look at the packaging, I showed you the image earlier there is nothing on it. There's no branding, there's no logo, there's no name, there's no contact information. It just looks like an official masterpiece box but with no information on it. Um, I did translate the, the Japanese words that are written on it it's, and it doesn't say anything about a company. It says, fits perfectly with the beginning, easy connection, wheels made of the same material as the top. I assume they mean plastic um, and rubber here. Um, careful construction and BT type car can be completely inserted. BT stands for Binal Tech, I assume, uh, which means you can bring this ramp down and you can drive Binal Tech car. Binal Tech was the alternators line, which we had a way long time ago, uh, and apparently they fit in here. So really cool that they you know made this. And at the time, we didn't know this, but the Masterpiece line was going to continue on and become what it is today. Uh, we didn't really get MP10 until much later. Now, just for a comparison really quickly here, here is the original G1 trailer for Optimus Prime. My only G1 that I ever kept. Um, you can see, well, this has a lot of stickers on it. And you may be wondering, why doesn't it look like this? Well, that's because they gave you stickers. So here are the stickers that they give you, and it is made to basically fully reproduce the G1 trailer, inside and out, all of these stickers, basically identical to the original. Now these aren't, uh, these haven't been applied obviously. I did talk to Dr. Agacass, he does not want to put these on, so I'm going to be very careful and put these away. Um, but you do get the stickers, and that will reproduce that G1 look that we got. So fast forward to maybe six or so years later, we ended up with MP10. So here is the MP10 trailer, and you can see it is still smaller, much smaller. So the MP1 was a much bigger size Optimus Prime, and it did actually didn't really scale with anything. So MP1 through MP9 were all kind of their own thing. They didn't really have a scale. They just sort of were making these masterpiece, you know, high quality, high detail figures. Um, it was only MP10 which is this figure right here that established the scale for the Masterpiece line. And that's really when uh, people started collecting more. Now I already sold my MP1, so unfortunately I don't have it to show you here. That's a real disappointment for me. It'd be nice to see this with the actual figure. Um, but as a consolation prize, I'm showing it with MP10 here. And it does look great. You know, it's a nice looking trailer. If you apply those stickers, obviously it's gonna look a lot better and a lot more like the G1 trailer. So that's the story behind this trailer. And you know, there was really only a few made, a couple hundred I think is, is the number that I got, but it's not really sure. It wasn't being sold on, you know, re retail websites. It was kind of through back, backdoor deals like on TFW and other places. And then it kind of disappeared and went away. 
Later on, we got Fans Toys. Fans Toys is obviously more, much more prolific now. You can find them all over, and they're producing all sorts of products. But at the time, this was a really unknown name, unknown company, um, and the, for their first product. So that's what the special, what's special behind this. So let's take a look at it. It is very simple. It's going to be a very short review. You do have the opening ramp here. You can see inside there. It's very, very large. You do get a roller. It is a very simple roller, and in fact, if you compare it to the original roller, it's very similar, not quite the same though. The moldings on the top are very similar, but then there's some differences here and there. Here's the back, actually, let's take off this decast piece here. It does feel like almost an exact duplicate of this, just upscaled. So, back then, I don't think there was as much worrying about duplicating design as they do today. So today you wouldn't see something like this being made by Fans Toys. Usually the KO companies do that. Um, but there you go, there's the roller. It does actually roll, like roller should. You do get the little pieces with it. So first you do get the gas filling piece here, the nozzle and the handle. And yes, you do get the hose. So the hose fits in right here, like that. And you can peg this into here. And then this pegs into here, just like the original toy. He can gas up his buddies or Optimus himself. Kind of cool. Um, the hose is a vinyl. And it does feel like, you know, basically a original G1 type of thing. I don't remember if that was rubber or not, but um, very similar to the original. So there's Roller. We'll just set him back here for now. So let's take a look at the features on the trailer. It is very similar to the G1 trailer. So you can open up the ramp and there's space in there to put a car, depending on the size. You do have these stabilizers here. If you open up to the side, it's primarily intended to hold up these edges when you open them up, which we will do in a second. You can also fold them to the front and you can set it down on that. It is on a slope here because these don't go down. On the MP10, these actually extend downwards and it holds up a little bit higher, but on this one it doesn't. So we'll leave those out to the side here. And if we open up the trailer, just like the G1 toy, it is tabbed on the top. It looks literally like the G1 toy, exactly. Really no difference, and just to prove that point, here is the G1 trailer. Slightly different colors, but almost identical. And again, I showed you these stickers do come with it, so if you want to, you can make it look exactly like this. We'll just set this down over here. But you do have basically the exact same thing, little cockpit here and here. You've got the spring-loaded piece here. If you push that all the way in, you can get roller pushed in there. And it does actually fire. The mechanism still works. And I'm going to try to be careful there, but it does shoot him off into space there. I don't want to do this too many times, so we're going to leave that uncompressed. You also get the drone here. You can open this up. Now, I don't know who's going to fit in there. Maybe there's the spike from MP1 will fit in there. You get the radar dish there. That looks good. Let's get rid of the G1 trailer. You also get the arm here that can work on Optimus Prime, which I don't have MP1, unfortunately. Uh, but this can work on Optimus. It is a little bit on the loose side. Oh, no, there we go. It does, it does pose. So you have an articulation point here, here, and here. Basically, you fold that up, and that's going to fit down here. This goes on an arm here, just by friction. And there's actually two. So it can go pretty high up, up to there. You can tab that canopy down and close it. And we'll close all that up and put that away. You can also use the missiles. So it comes with two missiles, just like the original toy. You can push those in there. And just like the original toy, they do fire off. So there's a button right here. 
press that button and it does fire. And again, I'm going to try to be careful with those spring-loaded mechanisms. This is a relatively old toy. Um, but that works just like the original. You can have these loaded. But pretty neat that they were able to make this. It does feel like a totally like an upscaled version of the original toy. In fact, I'm looking at the two molds and it looks almost identical. So I would have to say they probably did upscale it. Now, they didn't have their name on this, so nobody really associates this with fans' toys. Um, but for me and for a lot of people in the fans' toys community, this really is their first product. So, interesting to look at. I really appreciate being able to look at this. Thank you, Dr. Diecast. Um, hopefully you guys enjoyed seeing this little piece of history here. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.